Hey guys, this is North back again with another video. Today I'm going to give you my video which is titled Amber April. So I'm going to tell you the 30 fragrances that I wore during the month of April. So as far as amber fragrances go, we know that amber is an accord that is usually created from uh, labdanum, but generally, generally labdanum, but it can be an accord which is made from other resins such as frankincense, myrrh, benzoin, and other resins such as that. So this month, for the most part, about 27 days were uh, dedicated to fragrances that were in that style that had the note of uh, amber in it or were in a amber style. So now we know that the style, uh, if you look up on Fragrantica, it will say this is an amber fragrance or this is a woody fragrance or this is a sheeper fragrance. So now amber has Amber has been replaced instead of Oriental. So all of those fragrances that were once called Orientals are now called Amber. So 27 of them are pretty much in that style. I took three days to talk specifically about Amber Gris. And what Amber Gris is, is the regurgitation or excrement from a whale, which is found and which has been used in perfumery long before there was an amber accord so i wanted to make that distinction so i chose three days to focus on three fragrances that i have in my collection which feature the note prominently of ambergris so let's see what i had and let's go ahead and get it going all right guys here we go 30 days of amber fragrances i had to premiere amber april with from the house of javoy ombre premiere this is a good, sweet, and spicy amber fragrance. This one I still chose to get over purchasing Ombre Sultan from Serge Lutens. So I still opted to get this instead of that. So that's day number one. I'm gonna go through these pretty quickly. I'm not gonna go through a bunch of notes or anything like that. Just telling you what I wore from day to day. Day number two, I wore an oil attar from the house of Abdul Samad Al Qureshi. And this is called Royal Amber Spirit. Royal Amber Spirit is pure ambergris oil. So as I stated in the introduction, I did three days of talking about ambergris because you'll have fragrances that'll be named Amber or Ombra or Ombre, and they may be ambergris based and not resinous based. So this is ambergris from the sperm whale. Next. Day number three from the house of Guerlain. This is Ombre Eternal. Ombre Eternal is a extremely discontinued fragrance. It is very hard to find. I'm glad that I was able to pick it up, pick it up and add it to the collection. Next. Day number four is the last day of fragrances featuring the note of ambergris, and this is from Aqua di Parma. This is uh, Colonia Ambra. This is a cologne concentre. It is, you know, quite potent. It's one of the best ambergris dominant fragrances in the market. They have reformulated them and also put them in black bottles. So now back to sweet cozy ambers day number five from the house of gerald Boehm. this is ombra so now again we're back to this sweet spicy uh resinous sense this is an extract de parfum it only comes in 30 ml bottles this is the only one i own from the house this does remind me a little bit of Laird du desert modern cane it's a little bit sweeter i prefer this a little bit more next Day number six from the house of Nishane, we have Ombre Calabria. This is a great spring, summer, amber fragrance with some citruses in it. Ombre Calabria, all of these again are extract to parfums. Next. Day number seven from the Armani Privé collection. This is called Ombre Orient. This to me is one of the best amber fragrances, sweet, cozy amber fragrances that you can buy. This is also a gem. It is extremely hard to find. So uh, if you're interested in getting it, good luck finding it. Next. 
day number eight from the Tom Ford private line. This is Amber Absolute. Amber Absolute is another discontinued gem. It's not as hard to find as Ombre Orient, but when you do find it, you will find that it is quite expensive. So, but this is one of the most popular amber fragrances ever made. Next. From the house of L'Occitane, this is another discontinued fragrance. This is Ombre from L'Occitane. For me, this is one of the best, for my, in my opinion, one of the best sweet vanilla amber fragrances to ever exist. I absolutely love this one. I'm glad that I was able to find it and pick it up. Next. Day number 10 is from the house of Dior. And it is Ombre Nui. I do not have Ombre Nui, so I have put the picture of Ombre Nui on the screen. I ended up selling it. I had a 250 ml bottle. It was nice, but it wasn't something that I absolutely had to have. Definitely not in a 250 ml bottle. I saved a decan of, of 9 ml. I used that this month. Moving on. Day number 11 from the house of Ajmal. This is Amber. This is from their private line. Uh, they have a number of them that come in these bottles. To me, this is the only one that is worth purchasing. This is more of a, like a rose, oud, amber sort of scent. It is quite strong and animalic. I don't know why I'm having difficulty saying that term lately, but uh, it is a great scent but it is in the most expensive tier of the fragrances from Ajmal. Moving on. Day number 12 from the house of Larchester Parfums. This one is called Ombre Cello. Ombre Cello was one that I was very excited to get. Um, it was a 2021 release, so I was surprised that they got it where I live so quick. I just picked it up. I barely smelled it. I pretty much blind bought it. And uh, it's okay, Amber Scent. It's not as great as I once thought it was, but nevertheless, I had to give it another go. Moving on. Going back to the Tom Ford private line, this is Rived de Ambre. This is another discontinued gem. I've said it before, this reminds me of Ombre Calabria in the sense that it is an amber scent that can be worn in the summer and in the spring. Moving on. Day number 14 is from Ormond Jane. This is the only fragrance that I own from Ormond Jane. I hope to get some other ones in the future. And this one is called Tolu. Tolu is an awesome scent. This is one of my favorite fragrances as far as blind buys are concerned it is up there as far as my favorite resin scents i do really enjoy it there's a number of fragrances that i wanted to add to the list but i couldn't within the 30 days this is one i definitely had to add on there and to uh, talk about again tolu from Oran jane moving on day number 15 from the house of chanel this is bois de Zeal. this is um, the Eau de, Par Eau de Parfum, this is the 100 ml bottle or 200 ml bottle, I believe. 200 ml bottle is what it is. This is one I was able to pick up a tester of. I'm happy that I was able to get that because unfortunately only one shop in the gray market had it. And um, another unfortunate thing is that the gray market that I used to get my fragrances from had a huge fire and all of those places have burned down. So I picked that up before then. And this made it to the list. Let's keep it going. From the house of Molten Brown London, this is Milk Musk. This is the Eau de Toilette concentration. I had the Eau de Parfum first, but I enjoyed that so much that when I saw a 50 mil, one bottle left of the 50 mil and the Eau de Toilette, I picked it up and I've decided to wear that this month instead of this. This is a slightly lact lactonic, resinous, sweet, vanillic scent. Next. Back to the house of Javoy. This is La, La Liturgy Desires. This was a fragrance that this was like this was my second Javoy purchase, but 
it was the one that I wanted to have the most in my collection because it was at the top of a couple of people's um, or one person in particular, the perfume guy's incense fragrance list. So I thought that I was just gonna fall in love with it. As soon as I, as soon as it came in, I blind bought it. I like the scent. My wife hates it, but it is not anywhere near my top favorite incense fragrance. It's a little bit too green and cypress for me. It is a little bit church incensey, but it is more on the the green cypress side of things. So that's why it's a, a, a really low on my incense fragrance list. Next. Day number 18 from the house of Etat Libre de Orange. This is Atacuer Le Soleil. All right. This is a fragrance that is only consists of the note of labdanum. This is a very unique scent because it only has that one note. And when I wear it, I get that one, only that one facet that I get in other incense fragrances such as um, Sahara Noir from Tom Ford and a couple other like incense based fragrances. It is just that little note that you get from there. It's only this in there. So it's pretty unique. Only thing I don't like about Italian Libre de Orange is some of their themes and this guy on the cover, this Marquise de Sade, if you looked up <laughs> the history of him, uh, it, it would turn your stomach. Moving on. Day number 19 is from the house of Van Cleef and Arpels and this is Bois Dore. This was a Tonka bean scent that I really wanted to get my hands on. I blind bought it. I got it for a pretty good price. The longevity isn't that good, but it's a good dry kind of woody Tonka bean scent. Next. Day number 20 from the Prada private line. This one is called Some Velvet Morning. This is an awesome sweet peach vanilla amber scent. I really like this one a lot. Uh, the only problem with this one is that the longevity of it is not there. These in the private Prada private line are quite expensive and so even though I got this for a really good price I had contemplating getting rid of it just because of the performance issues but I'm going to hang on to it because simply because where I got it from like I said earlier in the video the place where I got these from had no longer exist so I'm going to keep on to on to it for now next Day number 21 is from Mask Milano. This is Mandala. This is a fragrance that I added to my incense list when I asked a guy from, for Luban, which is the Arabic word for frankincense. He sent me to this. I do like this scent. The only thing I don't like about these is that I tend to um, have a problem with the, with the lid. This part right here is supposed to be around here. And that's happened to both of the bottles that I own. Does anybody else have a problem with that? They also put the perfumer's name up here, but this is not an incense fragrance. That's for everybody. It is pretty unique. Um, that's all I have to say about it. Moving on. Day number 22 is probably one of, if not the most popular niche fragrance of all time. And this is La Air du Desert of Modern Cane from Andy Tower. Uh, I did get a decent price on this when I bought this from Amazon. I did blind buy it. I, I hadn't smelled it before. It is a good scent. It is not one of my favorite niche fragrances. I will contemplate possibly uh, selling it. It's good, but I just, you know, there's other things that I would rather wear more to get this type of feel, including Jeroboam Ombra. N moving on. Day number 23 from the house of Eve St. Laurent. This is Body Curos. This one is a sleeper hit. Nobody talks about Body Curos. Only reason I even found about it is when Perfume Guy was talking about benzoin fragrances and he brought this one up. You know, it's a relatively cheap designer scent. So I went and I picked it up. This one is a sweet uh, benzoin, but it also has eucalyptus and it has sage and incense in it. So it's a very good scent. I'm gonna to try to track down a vintage bottle of this if I can get it for a decent price. Next. Day number 24 from Imaginary Authors. And this is Memoirs of a Trespasser. Memoirs of a Trespasser is another like smoky resinous vanillic scent. The notes are on the back. 
uh, right here. For me, I get a little bit too much smoke from it for, for my liking. People really love this one. It's a lot of people's favorite from the brand. But for me, uh, it just really doesn't do anything for me for the type of notes for what I was expecting from it. I guess you get more of the smokiness from the guy wood in the oak barrels. But nevertheless, you never know until you try. Let's keep moving on. Day number 25 is another extremely popular niche fragrance from Maison Francis Kirk John. This is Grand Soir. I did pick up Grand Soir. It's kind of based on the hype. It's my scent of the day today. Um, again, this is another one that doesn't really move me that much. I've ha I have so many other uh, sweet or spicy or cozy amber fragrances that I believe perform better and are better sense than this. Might contemplate getting rid of this one as well. If you love this one, no offense to you, I'm glad that you enjoy it. But for me, it just doesn't do it for me. Moving on. Day number 26 from the House of Lilabo. Benjuan 19. This, as you see, they these bottles, these city exclusives are only available on the first of on the in September uh, throughout the world. If not, you have to get them from their particular city. This one is for Moscow. I don't think I would ever make it to Moscow, so I got it on the first. This is only a 50 mil bottle. This is tied with the most money I have ever spent on a fragrance. <laughs> I don't want to do that again. If I can find a way to maybe get it cheaper if I ran out of this, I would. But this is just something I felt like I really had to have in my collection. Even after testing it, I do like it a lot. And so let's keep it going. Day number 27 is from Stephane Humbert Lucas, but this is from his house, So Oud. So Oud, as you see. This one is called Cons, but the difference is, is this is the Extrait de Parfum 30 ml. So they call it the Parfum Nectar. I don't know if these are discontinued or not, but I picked this up because it, it you know, it was kind of hard to, it wasn't hard to find for me because my guy had it, but it's supposed to smell similar. It's supposed to be a precursor to Stephane Humbert Lucas Oma. So this is supposed to be the precursor to that. So it's like a powdery Nagamartha resinous scent. Next. Day number 28 from the House of Amwash. This is the first fragrance that I ever bought in the women's targeted line. And this one is called Material. This was one that, you know, I did test it. I felt like I really wanted to pick it up. One of my guys had it. I got it for a decent price, so I picked it up. Uh, this one I've only worn a couple times, but it is like slightly smoky, not as smoky as Memoirs of a Trespasser, but it's more like sweet resinous as well. Moving on. Day number 29 is from Altier de Zors. This was this is La Mer's du Desert. This is another successful blind buy. I really enjoyed this one. This is a incense fragrance. It does remind me of Sahar Noir from Tom Ford. And that's pretty much it. This is a great one. I'm glad that I picked it up. I do want to try some other ones from the house. I just wish that I could test them first. But this one was a successful blind buy. I don't want to try my luck with that. Next, on to the last day. The last day of Amber April. You already know what it is. From the house of Dick Teak. This is Benjuan Bohem. There's the baggie. Benjuan Bohem. This is my favorite Benzoin uh, fragrance at the moment. Benjuan 19 is a good one as well. It's just quite expensive. This one, people keep saying that it's discontinued, but I am. See, I did see it on Self Ridges still for sale. It's still available also exclusively through Diptyque's website. It's still available. I don't know if it has been discontinued, meaning that once those stocks are gone, that they won't make it again, but it's still available for purchase at a retail price. This is a beautiful scent. This is one from the perfume guide that he raved about that actually I do love and couldn't have been more happy with it. So that's it guys. Those are the 30 fragrances that I wore for the month of April. Do you have any favorite amber fragrances? 
and your collection. Please share some of them with me. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one, guys. Peace.